thinking of a career change but not sure how to approach the next steps? Well, look no further than the man in green himself, Paddy Jobsman, is here to give you all the tips and tricks that you need for that next career. Before we get on to moving careers and how you can find happiness in your job, I have to address it because you've become famous for this now. The green suit, what's the story behind it? Yeah, I mean, if you call yourself Paddy Jobsman, you really don't have a choice but <laughs> to stick on a green suit. Like, it comes with the territory, so... Uh, modern day peacock, and you can yeah. call it. That, that, that's your look, so your social yeah. media look. Yeah. Um, uh, listen, we'll go straight into it now, because I think it's uh, after the pandemic, so many people have switched careers. How important and how do you actually find work that you enjoy doing? Because the cliche, if you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. Yeah, that is that is the cliche term, but the way I look at it is, like as kids, we would have kept asking ourselves, you know, what are we going to do when we grow up? And then we've grown up, and we still don't have an answer to that question. And one, if anyone's at home and they're thinking about making a career change, a great question to get the ball rolling is to ask yourself, what do you want your life to look like in five years from now? What type of work would you be doing? Um, you know, what skills will you have developed? How much money will you be on? And if you can answer all those questions, you can then work backwards and outline a plan for getting what it is that you truly want. Mm. And then in terms of you're in a job where you find the job you like. How do you make that job work to your life? Because that's something that is only relatively new. Certainly my dad's generation, a job is just something you had to do every day. Whereas now, whether there's kids at home or whether there's hobbies or golf or whatever you want, how do you get a job to work for you? And kind of mould it to your life in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's far easier to mould a job around your personality rather than trying to mould your personality around a job. Um, a few ways that you can approach this. The first way would be um, you know, competence is directly related to job satisfaction. So how good you are at your job. So if you, the reason for that is because when you're good at something, when you're good at a job, you usually have control over what you do and how you do it. So what I tell people is that we're all good at something. So if you can figure out what you're good at, focus on becoming exceptional in those areas and you'll get a happy job out of it. Mm. So it's simple as that. Yeah. Now, you know, if, there's a few ways that you could go about it. Like another way would be to find what your per, what jobs align with your personality, yeah. because we've all got different temperaments. So personality tests are great for this. Now you don't want to get pigeonholed into any personality type, but it's give yourself a head start. Lean into it who you already are. I guess if you're not a people person, maybe don't take a job that's customer facing or, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're introverted, don't be presenting on the like, you know. air. <laughs> but that's what's gone anyway. Yeah. Um, now, uh, you, it's important to research uh, the jobs as well, isn't it? I mean, what's a jobs board and how do you put this, your, the skills in, 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 in play then when you're doing that sort of thing, when yeah. you're looking for so, the job? Linking in with the personality tests, they'll usually give you career paths with your results. Are personality tests, tests really real? Like You can find some good ones. The really? big five personality tests, there's a lot of science behind oh, it. Uh, the Holland personality test is another good one. And this, these are not the what friends character are you on Facebook? No, 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 no. I think they're a bit more in-depth. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but Andy, so on the jobs board, sorry, I digress. Yeah. So there's, there's certain things you should be looking out for. Yeah, so, you know, you'll get career paths. Uh, so, suggested career paths from these personality tests. And then you could go on to job boards, the likes of LinkedIn and Indeed.com and type in the jobs or type in the part of your work that you enjoy. Or, you know, if you like presenting or making videos, whack that into the search bar. And um, also type in your skills as well. And what will pop up are jobs that might tickle your fancy. And from there you can, you know, see what the requirements are, see if you're interested. And you can also see if there's any gap in your in your yeah. skills. Do you need to do a course? Do you need to get certified in any areas to break into that new industry? Now, if you're in a job and you want to be in a different job in a different uh, sphere of work, how how do you actually make that jump without quitting and jumping straight away? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. not everyone can afford to take a few months off while they search for their perfect job. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And can you do something kind of on the side? There's a few ways you can yeah. go about it. I, I'd suggest three ways. So the first way would be to start creating your own experience, okay? Yeah. And you could do that through, say, for example, side projects. Mm. If you wanted to get into digital marketing, if you wanted to get into social media, you could start making TikTok videos, build up a following. The second way would be to freelance. Mm. So if you work an office job, say, you could look at websites like Fiverr or Upwork and start building a portfolio, a body of work. And the last way I'd suggest 
a great way to get industry experience um, without quitting your job is through volunteering um, because charities are always in need uh, of people and professionals. And having this stuff built up on your CV hugely helps, doesn't it? Massive. It shows initiative, it shows if, they, if you're a really good person as well to helping out in the charitable and side then, of things. Yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you find sometimes there might be somebody who's in a job that they think they don't enjoy or they might just enjoy aspects of it. How do you work out what's transferable from that to your dream job? What's yeah. the best way of approaching yeah. that? So the thing is, no matter what job you worked, you have skills that transfer to every industry. So a great question to ask yourself would be, what, what skills do I possess that my new target audience will care about? Um, and that will come from the research that we talked about before. And once you identify those skills, all you have to do on your CV is provide evidence of when you demonstrated those skills at work and it led to a positive outcome, result or achievement. That's the hard thing on a CV in a page or two, mm. putting down everything that you can do because you can't send in a 10 page document because it's yeah. bamboozling to the recruiter. So how do you do that? How do you craft your CV so that it just hits the points you needed to hit? Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's trying to tailor your experience to what exactly the pain is of the hiring manager. And if you've no experience in that industry, you'd want to break down what are the transferable skills. So skills like problem solving, um, your you know, ability to work with a team, your ability to lead, uh, your ability to deal with ambiguity. And if you can back up all of those skills with evidence, then the hiring manager is going to, you know, you're going you're gonna to speak their language yeah. and, you're, and they're going to think, so OK, should, this person should you be my catering day. your CV based on the job spec that they've advertised? Yeah. I, I, so I change, kind of change, and pasting no, a little bit. Like a, yeah. Changing every single application, every single CV for every particular job, because they're all going to have slight differences, aren't exactly, they? Exactly, yeah. And, you know, the tailoring can depend on, you know, how how diverse the role is. So for example, you might only have to reorder your CV to get something that's more important near the top of your CV. So it captures the attention of the hiring mm. manager straight away. So I'd be definitely tailoring your, your CV for every job you apply for, but the amount of tailoring will depend on you know, the I type of role. I saw a thing recently where this girl put her CV on a cake. She printed ah, a one-page really. CV and a cake. That's one way of doing it. Yeah. But not everybody's going to do that, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, if you decide to make the move, that's it you're doing. What, what's the advice there? So again, I go, there's three really good ways to go about it. The first one would be to find an entry level job. So if you've no experience in an industry, you can break in through entry level and you can find these jobs through the likes of LinkedIn mm -hmm. and indeed job sites and just filter. They have a filter that just says entry level. You can filter by that or you could type in terms like junior or graduate. And the second way would be to try and move internally where you are now. So a lot of times it could be easier to move between departments when you're already in a company. Mm. And the last way would be to find a bridging role. So what I mean by that is, let's say you work in retail, but you want to move into tech. A bridging role would be IT support because anyone that works in retail could get a job in IT support, no problem to them. Mm, really, I suppose finally we do have to believe in ourselves because you know sometimes we have a crisis of confidence Absolutely. and you just can't be like that just if you can do it think you can do it you fake probably, it till you feel it basically yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Till you make that's it, what that's I'll it. say if anyone's listening and, and this is resonating with them what I'll tell them is whatever they decide to do just know you can do it there's people who are no smarter than you and I who have already made the career change that you want to make and I've worked with professionals from all backgrounds all experience levels sometimes it just and, takes that first yeah, yeah and you know Paddy, all, all really we could talk to you to all morning about this. <laughs> yeah. Believe in yourself. Believe I do like in that. yourself. Thanks like a that. million yeah. now. And a reminder, if you're looking for any career guidance, head over to paddyjawsman.com.